Hi, I'm Claire and this is a book haul. We have a few books to talk about, but altogether not that many, especially given it's been like four months since I've done a book haul. I'm really, really happy about how I've been doing with like being more intentional with bringing books on to my TBR bookshelf since I did my giant Con Mary unhaul video where I got rid of like 250 books out of my entire collection. So I'm very happy that the books that have come onto my shelves since that time are all books that I'm very excited about and books that I either I'm going to read soon or have already read. And actually from this entire stack, there is nothing that I went out and bought myself from the bookstore. Everything comes from subscription boxes or friends or publishers or the library. So I'm actually very, very happy with that. First up, I've got The Hidden Witch and The Midwinter Witch by Molly Knox Ostertag. These are sequels to The Witch Boy, which I read earlier last year. Absolutely adored. I really, really wanted the sequels and I got them as gift in the Stitch and Bitch Secret Santa that we originally planned planned for December and then only managed to kind of half do in January so that didn't super work out but I got these books in the mail and I was so 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 happy to have them because I had been wanting them for such a long time and I read these this month really really loved them the witch boy is the story of this boy Aster who is from a family of magic users but in his family the way magic works is that all the women are witches and all the men are shapeshifters and it's very clearly divided on those gender lines and Aster knows he's a boy but he also knows that that he's a witch and he wants to do witch magic and not shape-shifting. So the first book is the story of him trying to convince his family to let him learn witch magic and in these two books we have further stories about Aster and his friends. We've got the hidden witch, a witch who isn't part of the family and doesn't know that she's a witch and of course uh, as it says in the back of the book a witch needs a family which I thought was really interesting because obviously like witches and communities and covens like that's a really long running idea it goes with the idea of the witch that a witch is not alone she's in a group of other witches so I thought that was really interesting and then of course we've got the midwinter witch which is the third book and this one is about like a festival put on by Aster's all extended family in which the midwinter shifter and the midwinter witch are elected and who's going to compete to be that uh, basically prom king and queen of the witches and the shapeshifters but it is all about magic having a dark side and again it's a basic trope of witchcraft stories that some witches go bad and that you have to avoid going bad and doing dark magic and so Again, it was really, really interesting, but yes, I need to not do reviews in my book haul. I am going to be talking about these books in a uh, wrap up really, really soon. Next up, we've got my Illumicrate books from January. In case you haven't seen my unboxing video, I was hoping to have the February books to tell you about also in this haul. However, the Illumicrate for February has been delayed. So I've only got these two right now. They came in the January box. It was a double book box. And and I love the fact that they kind of match like thematically Infinity Sun is a book about brothers and the Sisters Grimm is a book about sisters but they also are both kind of like golden and like have foil on them like I love that they have these little matching touches because they came in a box together. First up we've got Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera and this copy is signed. I don't know. Yes, you can see. Uh, this is a book about two brothers thrown into a war generations in the making. The blurb at the back is honestly a little bit vague. It talks about a fight for good and evil between those born with power and those without. One brother who has the power to end it all and the other who will stop at nothing in his pursuit of glory. It doesn't tell me much about what the book is about, but I do know that it has this phoenix on the cover and that there was a phoenix bookmark that came in the box that was related to infinity sun so i'm excited about that being a magical element in this book i realize it's maybe not the best to tell you that i don't super know what it's about in a book haul but i just don't really want to go looking for spoilers on the internet next up we have the sisters grim by mena van prague and this cover is just 
so so gorgeous i can't stop looking at it in the viewfinder anyway this is about four sisters they were born to different mothers on the same day they found each other at eight and lost each other again at 13 and now they are all 18 and they have to come together again there is something cryptic about the dad being creepy in the back and oh my god those sprayed edges are so so beautiful i do love a black sprayed edge and i also love a naked hardback as we have discussed previously on this channel i just think this is such a gorgeous book i hope i love this novel as much as i love the packaging of it because it's so beautiful next up we have books i received from publishers starting with the unlikely escape of uriah heap by hj parry which i received for review from orbit and i'm starting with this one because i've actually already read this one this is about two brothers in wellington in new zealand charlie and rob sutherland the story centers around charlie very strongly because charlie has always had the ability since he was a kid to pull characters out of books when he's reading and he's really into it and he is like really excited about what he's reading basically characters come out of the book and that obviously can cause problems <laughs> But the book is actually in Rob's point of view and Rob is the one narrating and it kind of has this really interesting conflict between them about like Rob being the one who has to clean up Charlie's messes and I'm not gonna do a review on this book haul again but I quite enjoyed it. It was very very interesting so if you are into book characters coming to life would definitely recommend this one next up i got this extremely shiny proof copy that uh is probably throwing my white balance all akimbo this is the court of miracles by kester grant it's out from harper voyager on the 4th of june 2020 it is a lame is retelling so i'm not sure if harper sent it to me because i'm french and it's set in paris or if they sent it to me because they realized that i'm an incredible lame is nerd uh, and that I'm really fanish about Les Mis, but um, no matter which, it was a good pick for me. They asked if I wanted to review it, and I definitely, definitely did. I haven't read it yet, but it came with this adorable letter from the author that says, Good hunting, les amis. Welcome to the Miracle Court. Here I have penned one of the legends of our people. It is written for the sisters who would do terrible things to protect the ones they love, for those that society has cast aside for reasons of race, sex, age, faith, poverty, sickness, disability, and caste, for those who love the brick which is the nickname for uh, Les Miserables she's a massive ass book uh, for those that hear the people sing like again this feels very like it me <laughs> for Eponine who deserves so much more that is very true what you will see in these pages cannot be unseen thus should you decide not to join the ranks of the wretched the guild of assassins will gladly take care of you dun 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 <laughs> I mean, look, it really feels like very much my shit, so I'm super excited to read this. I have been very good and tried not to rush this to the top of my TBR, even though it doesn't come out until June and I don't need to like be reviewing it until June, but my goodness, it's been hard. And I know I've already pointed this out, but again, look at how shiny this proof copy is. Here on the front, in case you can't read it because it's too shiny, it says the city is a dark and lawless place and we are its children. And the author of this, Kester Grant, is a British Mauritian author. She's a person of color, which like, if you know anything about UK publishing is a big deal like we don't get a lot of books by people of color in UK SFF publishing there was a survey I think a couple years ago and it found something like less than five books published in an entire year by people of color across like YA in the UK or something like that I don't recall exactly, but it is shocking how few books by people of color are even published at all in the UK. So I'm very glad that I have a review copy of this. Again, it sounds like so much my jam. I'm sure I am going to enjoy it. At some point, I'm going to uh, cave and read it way before I have to read it for review, but I'm going to hold out for uh, hopefully a month or two more. And then we have another book that I'm really, really, really excited about, and that is The Book of Coley by M.R. Carey, 
which came wrapped in fake vine, which is amazing. Well played, Orbit. Well played. So I was sent this for review from Orbit UK and I'm really excited about it because I loved The Girl with All the Gift by M.R. Carey and this is a new book from him. It's the first book he's uh, writing that's in a series as opposed to a standalone. I know there was a sequel to The Girl with All the Gifts but they could be read separate. But this is the first book in the Rampart trilogy which is going to be published over uh, 2020, over one year. Uh, this one comes out in April of 2020 and look at how beautiful those three books are going to look together. The Book of Coley, The Trials of Coley and The Fall of Coley. I'm very excited about this series. The tagline I've got on the sell sheet here says everything that lives hates us. When nature has turned against humanity, who will save us? It is about a boy called Coley who is afraid of trees. In the near future, nature was failing, plants were dying, so we made them stronger because there's no way that could go wrong at all. And now nature has the upper hand on humanity again. Plants have become terrifying. Animals have become even more terrifying than they already were. There's also mention of the shunned men, the outcasts who live outside the village walls, who also have turned against the people in the village. And Coley thinks that the way for him to never be afraid again is to revive the technology from the old world because that will protect them and then he won't have to fear the plants or the animals or the shunned men ever again. And he is very, very wrong indeed. Dun dun dun! I'm so, so just for this book, honestly. <laughs> So that's The Book of Coley and it's out on the 16th of April 2020 from Orbit Books. We've also got The Court of Miracles out on the 4th of June 2020 from Harper Voyager and The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep out now from Orbit. And finally, I wanted to do a little bit of a library haul. I've got a few books out from the library now. They're all books that I'm reading for the Booktube SFF Awards. So if you've seen the shortlist announcement videos that all of us Booktube SFF Award judges made. You'll know what books these are. They're just some of the books for the categories that I'm judging that I didn't already have physical copies of in the house. So I wanted to borrow them for the month or two that I'm going to be doing readings for the Booktube SFF Awards just so I have physical copies when I'm talking about them in the videos and all of that. Um, I mean I'm probably not going to keep them for two whole months because what if there's holds on them at the library? I'm going to feel like an ass. Anyway, I've got This Is How You Lose a Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal El Motar. This is a time traveling love story between two women who are spies on opposite sides of a time war. It's told in letters. I hear the writing is really, really lush and beautiful. So I'm looking forward to that one. I don't know if I'm gonna like it or not, but it's one that's definitely been talked about a lot on Booktube SFF and I expect for it to be on the final ballot for the Hugos this year because it's been on a lot of award shortlists. So it'll be good to be reading it. Next we've got A Recursion by Blake Crouch. This is a near future science fiction thrillery kind of thing about a world in which a mysterious disease that causes people to have memories that they didn't actually live through embedded in their minds and it's kind of driving them to distraction. The main quote on the back of the book here is what if someone could rewrite your entire life, which definitely does sound creepy. I'm not sure how much I will enjoy this because it's not like massively my kind of thing. Normally this type of like near future thrillery, what if everyone and everybody was awful kind of book, but I am ready and willing to be pleasantly surprised by this. I know so many people on booktube love it. Maybe I'm just wrong about it. There's The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, a book that's been so so buzzy on booktube but I have no idea what it's about except that it's by Erin Morgenstern who wrote The Night Circus, another book that like everybody loves and I know it's in a circus and that's all I know about it because I haven't read it. So um, this one 
is obviously up for the Booktube SFF Awards in the Best Fantasy category, so I'm going to be reading it. Uh, and it's such a beautiful, beautiful book. I mean, it's got those um, sprayed edges. Is it called a sprayed edge if it's a design? And then the end papers here are absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, I can't show you what it looks like underneath the dust jacket because it's got like a library protection plastic on it, so you can't take the dust jacket off. But it's a very lovely looking book, and I'm very intrigued by it, even though I have no idea idea what it's about. Again, probably should have researched it for a book haul, but I just filled my reaction to the shortlist and so I didn't want to like spoil myself ahead of time for what this was actually about. And finally we've got The Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, a book that I didn't realize would be this big until I went and got it from the library. I knew it was long, but I'm was always planning on reading it on audiobook. I thought it'd be nice to have the book just in case there was a map in the book or something like that. Or uh, maybe like a list of characters that I could refer to. There we go, there is a map in the book. So that's always good to have a physical copy of. Ooh, dragons! I'm so excited about this book. Like I know it's massive and I know I'm going to be like whinging when I'm reading it about how much time it takes and how like stressed out I am about finishing all of the books for the Booktube SFF Awards but honestly like I'm so excited about reading this. It's got a queen who needs to have a daughter to inherit her kingdom and then it's got a dragon rider or a girl who trained to be a dragon rider all her life and now maybe she's not gonna get to be a dragon rider and obviously dragons and I'm so excited about all of that but definitely I'm going to be doing the audiobook because this is so massive. So that's it. These were all of the books that I've acquired into my collection in January and February. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that despite being good myself and trying not to buy loads and loads and loads of physical books, I was still able to provide some temptation for you by showing you all of these books that I acquired by other means. No, but seriously, do let me know in the comments below if you're interested in any of those books or if you're going to buy any of those books or get them from your library or anything like that because there is nothing that makes me happier than when people say that they read a book on my recommendation and loved it. If you'd like to see more from me you can check out a previous video on screen right now and if you haven't yet please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.